Hello traders, it's Samurai Trader and welcome to my video, Trading with Fractals. Four or five years ago, I recorded a video on trading with fractals and since then on YouTube, it's had hundreds of thousands of views. So obviously very popular. So I just thought I'd go back and just do a quick recap on trading with fractals to share some ideas with you that you can use on a day-to-day -day basis. As always though, I do need to pull up the disclaimer there is a risk in trading, please feel free to pause the video to read the disclaimer. Also, I should say, traders, all of my videos are raw, real and unedited. So if I fluff anything up, you're going to have to forgive me. Now, please make sure that uh, you download my free ebook, The Truth About Day Trading. I also have a training manual, but you'll see the link below, or at least if you visit my website, you'll be able to download my training manual as well. And a very quick advertisement, and we'll move on. Uh, for $197, you can obtain the world's most comprehensive day traders program. Seriously, go to my, my website and see how comprehensive there is. Nothing else like it, traders. Nothing else. My Google Drive, the members area, as is described by members, is a gold mine. Have a look and see what my members have to say. And on top of that, we've got a little bonus running at the moment where I've got over 250 traders each week attend my live coaching sessions. I've been running these now for over three years, uh, and you get eight sessions in the coaching room, one month free, basically. If you decide after that one month you want to continue, you can join for only $97 a month. If uh, we've got, as I said, um, uh, hundreds of traders there and they attend for a reason to get the best education there is out there. End of ad, let's get into it. Okay, fractals. Bill Williams uh, wrote a book many years ago called Trading Chaos, which really made him quite famous on the work that he did with science and fractals. It's a little bit like fractals are quite unique, a little bit like Fibonacci numbers, I suppose. He then had a follow-up book, which is really very much based around his course also called New Trading Dimensions. And what he introduced uh, in his book to help him actually trade Elliott waves or count Elliott waves, I should say, was his up and down fractals. Now, fractals we find in nature. They're everywhere. A snowflake is a perfect fra fractal example. A fern, a leaf, a pyramid, even the markets, if you stand back and you understand fractals, they appear on all time frames. Hence, you will see that I trade using an, uh, a 34 EMA and an 89, and you can use a 55 if you want, and a 21. And you will see that no matter which time frame you trade, you will see price action bouncing off those points day in, day out, every market, every time frame. In a way, that's something that's fractal in nature. And once you start to understand that and you recognize that, it's just amazing how you can use that with your trading. But anyway, moving right along, Bill also put together a number of other indicators. Now, the only indicator that I really have on my charts that Bill put out is the fractals. And I don't consciously use them anymore. But subconsciously, they're there in the background all the time for me to evaluate. So how can we use fractals? Well, first of all, to understand what a fractal looks like, in many ways, they're little swing highs or swing lows. This is a common fractal. And if you were to hold your hand out in front of you, this is your middle finger. And so you've got two fingers uh, to the left, off to the right, you've got another finger, then you've got your thumb. Now, it doesn't have to be in perfect formation. You can have unorthodox fractals as well. And so some describe it as the tip of an arrowhead, and they don't have to be even, of course, exact, but they have to be lower or at least two on each side. And same with the um, uh, down fractal, as we've got here. Now, how we can use them, traders, and I don't know if you can hear, hear that. I've got my <laughs> platform going. I've got some alerts that keep going off. But let's have a look at how you might use them. 
Well, they're invaluable for using fractals for drawing trend lines. In fact, Tom DeMarc, who wrote the excellent book, uh, the, new, the New Science of Technical Analysis, he's trademarked, I think he calls it um, uh, DeMarc Lines. Now, when I've read and studied his work, to me, all he's using really is fractal points to draw his trend lines, but he will adjust them, which is typically what we would do if we're using them to draw our trend lines as well. So it's, there's, you know, it's, it's nothing new in it, but what it does, traders, it makes drawing your trend lines, these are fractal points there and there, makes your drawing of trend lines very mechanical and very rules-based when you're drawing in fractal points. And so there's many, many benefits in drawing those in. In fact, when I was trading Forex full-time, going back, gee whiz, it's 15, 16 years ago now, uh, I was using fractal breaks full-time. That was the main source of trading, the main methodology that I used, and it kicked butt. And in fact, when I had Stephen working for me, a full-time trader, um, we put together a paper on this, on how to trade using fractal breaks. And there's a number of concepts that you can actually use. Uh, we actually called this um, Samurai Trader Strategy, all using fractal breaks. It was very, very effective. Now, back then, we traded mainly using a seven pip uh, range chart. Now, what I do actually today, traders, I'd drop that down to probably a three or four pip if I was trading Forex. And it, the, the concept kicks butt on any market that trends well. So you're looking for a trending market. Now, here, if you're going to be scalping, Another way we look at it is, is really using micro trend lines. That's a fractal point there. That's one there. Well, you can't see that side, but um, that would have been one there, there, and there. Now, you had one there and there. Hence, the trend line goes out here, and there's your break. Fractal point there. And you well, here, and you'll see this on the chart. Sometimes you don't get a perfect one. So you still need to draw in where you believe you're going to get the break. But the concept works just as well today as it did 15, 20 years ago. It always will work as long as you're trading a trending market. The best thing is let's go and have a look at the charts. Let's, um, let me just pull this up for you. Come on, up you go. Um, here we go. So first of all, uh, one of the things that um, uh, Bill Williams had was his gaze up for three moving averages that he would use. Now, they're actually displaced moving averages. You can see here that I've got my chart offset here by, whoops, sorry about that, by nine, uh, uh, spacing of nine because of this offset. But all of these little black dots are fractals. Now, there are certain markets and certain charts where it looks better and where they behave better. For an example, this is a tick chart. Over here, I've got my Renko chart. Okay, so on a Renko, I find they're just much easier. And of course, Renko is beautiful for smoothing out price action. But personally, I like to have a combination of Renko and tick charts running. The reason for that is, yes, Renko is beautiful for smoothing out price action, but sometimes it can hide some very important information. But anyway, back to fractals. Let's have a look at this chart here. Now, once you understand how to trade fractals, we're looking for a fractal break here, and you'd be looking for it below. In this case, you can use a 21 EMA will do almost exactly the same thing. So we're looking for a mar the market to change direction. So I've got some divergence, and yes, I would be normally referring to, oh, well, I don't have an anchor chart on this one, but normally I'd be referring to uh, an anchor chart. Um, just expand this one back out. Uh, to just for double checking divergence. It's always good. As they say, having one reason for taking a trade is great. Having three or four is three or four times better. So I'm looking for other reasons to take a break, uh, to take a trade. Now, just here, traders, we actually had there a fractal break there. So what Bill will do, he'll draw in his horizontal line. Now you've got a fractal break there, but you had another one form here. So you're trading the most recent break. 
And here you've got this one. And what you're actually doing is you're putting a, a sell stop one tick below the low. So what it allows you to do is to be swept into the market. Here we've got a lot of angulation. Now, Bill Williams is another is it's another term that I actually got from Bill 20 odd years ago was angulation. See how price is angling away from the EMAs here? Uh, that dramatically increases the probability of a turn, at least in the short term. So we get this turn. See this break just there? You draw in. A fractal point. Now, just over here, you might just be stopped into that trade just here. If not, here it is here. Now, one of the challenges with uh, with fractal breaks can be we actually had an entry down here. And so you can give away a lot. So a fractal break trading strategy is really more of a, here's my another entry, it's more of a breakout strategy. But what Bill would do, he would add to his position. He'd have his first short, he'd add, he'd add. Then he's got his exit rules. So you're adding to a trade as you're um, heading in that direction. Now, we actually would have had a, an entry here. You had one here, of course. You had one there, and you had one there, and you had one there. Each case, I think, we got in earlier than waiting for a fractal break. Let's have a look at the Australian dollar. Now, what we're looking at here, traders, is a one tick Renko. Don't be fooled by this, okay? Meaning, um, one tick Renkos uh, can be brilliant. Now, we're live in the market. Now, it is 19 minutes past 8 a.m. in London, so it's 8.19 a.m. And what we can see here is that the one tick Renko uh, uh, is ticking over, or actually I should call it what it is. It's a pip, not a tick. It's a one pip. Uh, Renko is ticking over and extremely tradable. Now, what you actually would be doing is we'd have our one, our two, and our four. We have our entry. We've got our anchor chart one and our anchor chart Two, what we're looking at doing is trading in the direction of the higher time frame. When we've got divergence such as there, we had divergence here and we had a pivot bounce. So you can see there, this is our main pivot. This is the midline. This is the S1. Now, when you come down and hit the S1, uh, it makes it a high probability trade if you've got double divergence. You can see we've got divergence there. Here's our entry and you've got divergence there. That's what we call a 2D. Now, what about the fractal entries? I mentioned that Bill would look for a horizontal line break. You had one just there. You've got another one there. You've got another one just over there. You've got another one here. But there's another way that we use fractals that I mentioned earlier, and it, when it works fantastically, is using it for trend line breaks. Now, see that fractal point just there? It might be a little hard for you to see. Initially, you would have drawn a fractal line heading up here, and you're waiting for a clear cut close below it, which you don't get, and another fractal ends up setting up. So you draw from the original point through there. There's your break. Here is another break. Here is your next break. So you can see here, it's almost like drawing flags in on your charts, okay? And then we had no more horizontal line breaks, but now as we get down here, we're now looking at a um, potential fractal trend line breaks down here. Now, let's go and have a look at oil. Now, once again, you can use this on any market, any time frame. So when I trade oil, I use the 233 tick chart, one of my favorite um, uh, markets. It's, and by the way, let me just qualify this. The last year with COVID, oil's been just terrible, but now we're back up to hitting record price, um, highs again. Things are starting to tick over nicely. But if we look at this here, where we see the black dots, they're my fractals. So uh, I've got looking for a potential fractal break 
across here, but I have one set up there. There is my break to go short. Now over here, see these fractal points as we go up? Here is your break following bill, or you get a break very close if you're drawing in your fractal lines just there. Now, note up here, we had no fractals until here. So you wouldn't be able to draw a line until you had that one form. See down here, see that black dot there? Here you would have, there is your fractal line. Now what I am looking for to qualify, there's one other thing I do want to do, is I want to qualify below the blue trigger line. See that blue line? I've got to make sure I get a close below that, just a bit of added confirmation. Now as a reminder on how Bill would be trading this, there's his initial break. He's still in, he's still in. He adds to his position. He adds to his position. So he's adding to his positions as the market continues to fall. Now, I mentioned also, it can be a bit like trading breakouts where we had an entry there, an entry there. Uh, you up here, for any members watching this, you had a T20 up here. Let's perhaps have a look at... Uh, Actually, let's have a look at this. This is a great little market for uh, for any, just check this, for any new traders, if you're getting your trading career underway, uh, let's just say if you're interested in futures. What I've got here right now is the micro ES, uh, the on the ES, which I've got just, where's the ES here? Now, this is, this is live as we're watching it. We can see here, it just ticks away beautifully. Uh, you can see, once again, my fractals are there and it look how smooth price action is. Now, once again, I have an entry chart, an anchor chart one, anchor chart two. If three charts is too much, you just trade with two. What we're looking at doing is executing our trades in the direction of the higher time frame. Now, what I wanted to show you was during the Globex session, which we're in now, you can get away with, believe it or not, trading on the ES a one tick Renko 90% of the time. What that means is if you're, say, trading the big contract with a one tick Renko, your maximum risk, see this white paint bar? These are entry points, potential entry points here. Reasons there, you're looking for three uh, for, for three candles to close low, you don't get it. But your maximum size stop, if you used a sell stop here, here and here, is going to be six ticks. You may even be able to get out with five ticks. So on the big contract, that's 62.50 a contract up to 75. On the micro, that's only six uh, six dollars twenty five to seven dollars fifty maximum risk if you use the super scalper. Now, what you can be using, of course, is your short term stochastic hooks, etc. Then you're entering uh, what we call a rule of one, where your your loss is only going to be five dollars or fifty dollars on the big contract. Anyway, so it's what I'm trying to get across here, traders. This is a great spot to start your trading on the micros before you advance to the big contracts. Now, let's get back to fractals. So how could we trade fractals here? See that fractal point there, there and there. So initially you'd have a point going there to there, but then you get a new fractal. There's my break. Here is my next break. So remember, I'm looking at angling for a short. I want to see the trend line go from the low up to the high. Now, with Bill Williams' uh, uh, strategy, you have a short just there. You could add to that position. Oh, and where would you stop go? Your stop, in this case, goes one tick above, and you're still in it. You would add to the position, and you can have do a final adding down here. Now... When do you exit? What I want you to notice here on this chart, traders, notice this here once again, we're getting a lot of what we call angulation. Let me move this over. And this is why you want to make sure you incorporate using uh, an anchor chart, at least one. Now, see down here, I've got a little bit of divergence. But what I want you to notice here is that look at this great angulation I've got just here. See that? The, the alarm bell should be ringing because it becomes what you call a mean reversion trade. It's going to go back to the mean. 
Now, if we've only got a divergence on your entry chart, we're aiming for the 34. If you've got divergence on two charts, you aim for either the floor pivot or the 89. Okay, let's just check the anchor chart one. Now, looking at the anchor chart one, see that there. You can see how strong that move is. Okay, but see how my MACD, now this is a custom MACD, but if you've got uh, Ninja Trader, I've got, I provide those indicators to you free of charge anyway for, for members. But if you're, say, using MT4 or uh, other platforms, I give you a standard indicator setting. We'll model this exactly on a standard MACD. I use a very sensitive MACD. So this is what we call a 2D move, two divergences. Now, where does price action go? And here we go. We're expecting a pivot bounce. Remember, what was once support becomes resistance. So see how now we're heading down, little bit of support there, not much we punch through, but now we've come up We've hit the 89 and we're heading back down. Now, as we come back down, we're always thinking, where's our entry? Here's our entry. Where's our last swing low? Down here. So there's a great target down here. Now, if you're trading the big contract, this would be nearly a $200 move. If you're trading the micro, that is going to be there uh Let's be conservative. Let's just say a 12, 50, just to say $15 move and $150 move. Now, as we come down, see the low, what are we expecting or thinking? We're thinking we may get a double bottom. No divergence. Okay, we're coming down. Now I'm getting divergence again. Okay, so I'm getting, okay, we're thinking, okay, I've got divergence. Now, let's just check on and I know I'm digressing, but I think it's just a great little lesson why the market's live. Look at that just there. It's actually a 3D. Divergence, divergence, divergence. That was the divergence there. So where's my target? Now, remember I said if we only have it here, we aim for the 34. The next one here is we aim for the 89. Okay, so there we can nearly a double bottom and we're going to hit it and there we've, we've hit, well, we nearly hit it just there. Okay, but on the fractals, let's get back to this. So on the fractals, there was another fractal trend line break, just there. Now, if you're looking for a fractal horizontal break, that's your last fractal point and it wouldn't be across till there. So this is one of the challenges you can have if you're only trading fractal breaks per se, where we could have been in uh, trading that right there and we would have been in up here. So fractal breaks can be very, very much uh, a breakout strategy or if you're using them for trend line breaks as I've got just there and you've got one just there, I don't have any there, and now I've got a potential, see this up here, are we going to get a break up here? That would be the questionnaire, see your fractal and fractal. So trader, I wanted to, traders, I want to give you a, really a, a, just a quick overview again. Fractals are available virtually on every trading platform. I have them there and, and I rarely will now draw in a fractal line, but visually and psychologically, you see it there. It's, it's what we call muscle memory. We get used to them there. So what I'd recommend traders is um, uh, you put fractals on your charts and just start to look for those fractal trend lines. Make sure you have subscribed to my channel. Go and visit my website, Traders. Come and join us for a month in coaching and, um, and just see the massive difference it will make to your day trading. Thank you, traders. See you on the next video. Mm -hmm.